Hi, welcome back to our study in the book of Ezra. Ezra is all about restoring a people, re restoring their, their faith and trust and their work in the Lord. And today in chapter 6, we are reaching the goal. The work on the temple will be completed. And then there's going to be a gap uh, in between, and I'll catch that up to you and with you on that as we get to it. So if you take the three books, Ezra, Esther, and Nehemiah, they form a trilogy. They, they in Bible college and seminary would be the post-exile uh, books that they're wrapping up their exile and returning to the homeland at different times and for different reasons. Uh, but these all fit together, and they all are like a puzzle that come together. So Ezra is about restoring a people. Esther is about renewing a faith. And Nehemiah is all about rebuilding a nation. And in the blue, that highlights where we are at. And we are, for, we are finishing up the first major Roman numeral of uh, Ezra. And then we'll have the second one um, starting in chapter 7. The restoration and the rebuilding of the temple takes 23 years. And uh, this chapter is entitled Reaching the Goal, The Works Completed. Now, with the blue arrow on our timeline chart, you can see it's already down under King Darius of Persia. Uh, the temple is completed in Ezra 5 and 6, and the date on that is 515 before Christ B.C. Now, what I want to explain to you is this. The book of Esther comes in in entirety in between chapter 6 and chapter 7 time-wise of Ezra. You see, the first six chapters are really about Zerubbabel and, uh, and Joshua, the high priest. And then Ezra is going to go. There's going to be a second return of four to 5,000 exiles. If you can look on down the chart and you find Ezra 7 to 10 and the date uh, 458 before Christ, there's almost a 60-year-old 60 60 year gap between the finishing of the temple and when Ezra brings people back with him and he gets very active then. So um, what happens in between is the book of Esther. I am When I taught this the first time, this series, I stopped here and I taught the book of Esther and it made it very clear and very uh, plain to my class, and the flow was very good. Um, I'm not able to do that when I'm recording and putting uh, videos up on various outlets. And so what I want to share with you, and I'd encourage you to do is this. If you don't see Esther up, it means I'm in the process of, of recording these for the first time. And uh, just watch for them. And you probably should go ahead and just uh, finish off the book of Ezra with me. But as soon as I am through with Ezra, I'm going to turn and put up Esther. Nehemiah is already up and has been for a number of years now. Let's get into the book. All right. Um, we already know that uh, in verses 1 to 6, the permits are pulled. And we're going to use very very up-to-date language, uh, but they, they had to have permission. They had to have permits back in those days. I also want to share with you when I'm able to do this, and these will be in the red color, that other books, uh, other men of God are alive during this time, and Daniel is a very dominant one. And so we see a lot of uh, several of his chapters are mentioned here and references that drops right into this time zone. And I would recommend go ahead and look them up and read them in conjunction with this lesson. 
All right, here's our text, though. Then Darius, he's the Persian king, the king made a decree, and search was made in the house of the rolls where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. All right, in chapter 5, uh, the opposition raised their heads, and they saw that the work on the temple was going great. Uh, in fact, it was moving ahead of schedule. And they didn't like it. It scared them to death. Now, Cyrus, who okayed this, was long gone and dead. And a couple other kings reigned in between. And now Darius is on the throne. And they thought, well, let's, let's write back to him and tell him what's going on. And we're going to tell him they're getting close. And if you go back and check their history, you'll find that the Jews are very contrary people. They won't listen to anybody. They one time were a very dominant force under Joshua, under Moses, and uh, on the early, the early goings on in the promised land. And so Darius did look it up and he said, whoa, let's put the skids on this till we can sort this out. And so the work of the temple was stopped. And it did not, it sat for years before it would get rolling again. And so Darius uh, makes, uh, makes the decree and the search was made. Go find, look at the rolls where the treasures were laid up in Babylon. And let's read on because what's going to happen is Zerubbabel is going to ask, would you go check and, and find the actual decree that Cyrus made? Don't listen to our enemies. And there was found at Achmetha in the palace that is in the province of the Medes a roll, and therein was a record thus written. And here we can see where Achmetha was, but it's called Ekbatana now. And I have an arrow pointing to that. It's just a, it just was a name shift whenever an empire changed hands. And Ekbatana was the Greek name for the capital of the Empire of the Medes, and later one of the capitals of the Persian Empire. It was fortified by the Median king Arphaxad in his war against King Nebuchadnezzar of Assyria. We read about this in Judges. And then also in history, Antiochus Epiphanes IV fled there shortly before his death. He was the one that treated the Jews so badly and offered a pig on the altar. And he, he is the abomination of desolation. He, it's what he did to the temple. Verse 3. In the first year, here's what the, the scroll says. In the first year of Cyrus the king, the same Cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of God at Jerusalem. Let the house be built, the place where they offered sacrifices, and let the foundations thereof be strongly laid, the height thereof three score cubits, and the breadth thereof three score cubits. With three rows of great stones and a row of new timber, and let the expenses be given out of the king's house. Cyrus paid for this. And also let the golden and silver vessels of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took forth out of the temple, which is at Jerusalem, and brought unto Babylon, be restored and brought again unto the temple, which is at Jerusalem, every one to his place, and place them in the house of God. See, they even, when, they, when they, the Medes and the Persians defeated Babylon, uh, they took inventory and they knew what, was still in Babylon in storage. And once again, all the, all the gold and the silver instruments and furnishings and things like that and the vessels were going to go back home. Now, therefore, Tatnai, governor beyond the river, Shethar Buznai, and your companions, the Afarsakites, which are beyond the river, be ye far from thence. So these are not these are the nasty people. They're not doing right. These are the troublemakers. And so the government is grounded. And watch and see how this goes in verses seven through twelve. And first and first 
what gets said by Darius to the to the satrap who was the governor of the land and his cohorts, number one, let the work alone, lay off. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews, which is Zerubbabel, and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. Amen. Secondly, the order stated, be not hindered. You don't do anything to hinder them. Moreover, I make a decree what ye shall do to the elders of these Jews for the building of this house of God that of the king's goods, even of the tribute beyond the river, forthwith expenses be given unto these men, that they be not hindered or ceased. Uh, this is a real blow to the opposition because he writes back and says, you take it out of the taxes you collect and you make sure these men are compensated for their work. Wow. Then the third thing is day by day without fail, meaning on a daily basis, Darius was going to give some orders to the opposition, and that which they have need of, wow, both young bullocks and rams and lambs for the burnt offerings of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the appointment of the priests which are at Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail. Basically, what, what Darius said was, you take care of their daily needs. You see to it that their needs are taken. And so not only is he paying for it, he's making them see and wait upon them. And it's amazing what God can do when they are enemies and you turn the thing over to the Lord. That they may offer sacrifices of sweet savors unto the God of heaven and pray for the life of the king and of his sons. I love this, that Darius knew that they would be praying for him. He wanted that and he understood that. Keep in mind, who did he have back there? Not just Ezra. He had Daniel. And Daniel was, was the head. Daniel led, and I'll just use the word soothsayers, the ones that were the prophets. But he was the distinguished one. He got every, he always, anything he said came true because God said it. And so he knew what it was to have godly men pray for him. And Darius wanted these Jews to pray for him. And they would and they did. Also, I made a decree that whosoever shall alter this word, let timber be pulled down from his house and being set up, let it be hanged thereon and let his house be made a dunghill for this. A dunghill was an outhouse. Tear his house down, hang him with the timber and then build an outhouse with it. So there was a death penalty involved. You do this or else. Then he continues with the fourth request and command. Let it be done with speed. And the God that has caused his name to dwell there, destroy all kings and people that shall put to their hand to alter and to destroy this house of God, which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree. Let it be done with speed. And this decree that Darius gave lasted from 515 B.C. till Titus, the Roman general, burned down the temple and destroyed Jerusalem in 70 A.D., over 500 years, almost six. So, temple time in verses 13 to 18. Then Tatnai, governor on this side of the river, uh, Shethar Buznai and their companions, according to that which Darius the king had sent, so they did speedily. So the temple's completed, but it is smaller than Solomon's first temple. And the elders and the Jews built, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Ido, and they built and finished it according to the command meant of God of Israel. And according to the commander of Cyrus and Darius and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. The date on that is March 3rd, 1517 BC. And this house was finished on the third day of the month of Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. April 1516 before BC. And the children of Israel, the priests and the Levites and the rest of the children of the captivity kept the dedication of this house of God with joy. 
and offered at the dedication of this house of God a hundred bullocks, two hundred rams, four hundred lambs, and for a sin offering for all Israel, twelve he goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. And they set the priests in their divisions and the Levites in their courses for the service of God, which is at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. They pulled out the book of Moses, the scrolls. They read exactly how are we to serve God? How are we to worship God? How are we to lead the people in, in worshiping the Lord within the temple? They got it right. They, they had to do it right, and they got it right. They went back to the Word of God. And how do, how do we fix a society? How do we fix a nation? How do we fix our families, our churches, our, our lives? We've got to go back to the Word of God. We've got to go to the book because it has the instructions, and it gives us the wisdom and the power that we need to, to allow God to bring change. Then they prep, the Passover is practiced. Verse 19 says they kept it. The children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. They finally restored it. They purified. For the priests and the Levites were purified together. They got their hearts right and their lives right. All of them were pure and killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity. That's the Passover lamb and for their brethren, the priests, and for themselves. They, in verse 21, they separated themselves to the service of the Lord, and they sought God. And the children of Israel, which were come again out of, the, out of captivity, and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land, to seek the Lord God of Israel, they did eat. The filthiness actually doesn't mean just worldliness it means the sexual uncleanness they they came back to f filthy living terrible living and they cleansed themselves of 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 all of that and the thoughts and got rid of that and then there was joy and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy for the lord had made them joyful and turned the heart of the king of Assyria to them to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. This gets exciting. Zechariah chapter 8 fits in here through 14, actually. And Esther 1 through 10 drops into here also, as I already mentioned to you. And so there's an intermission. There's the book of Esther. I next week will be doing chapter 7 and we'll finish the book in a month and then I will go and record and teach Esther. So if you're if you see in my playlist uh, the book of Esther that means we've finished it and we got to we got and did Esther too. And I hope you'll hang in there uh, with us through Ezra and also join us with the book of Esther when we get there. So I want to thank you uh, for, for uh, listening to this video. If there was a takeaway at the end, it was part of the outline. I tried to emphasize some of that. Go back and look and just look at the outline and look at the points of how, of how God worked and how God used people and then what the people did to get right and to serve the Lord. Those last few points that we had in those verses when they restored the Passover. Thank you, Father, for this good chapter. Thank you for the, just the, the history of God's people and the joy they had when they got their temple back and it got built. And there was no doubt who allowed, not only had touched kings' hearts, but also who moved among foreign kingdoms to bring about the glory of God. Thank you again for, the, for this story to this point. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray, amen. Thank you and God bless you.